Hey everybody, welcome back to Here to See. Here to See, where we share pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding of the difficult, and instructions for a better life. And today, boy, another good one. Pastor Jerry Jacobson is going to share with us today what is the rapture. What is the rapture? So sit back and like and subscribe so you can hear more of these because there's more good ones coming. God bless. Hi there. How are you doing today? It's a beautiful day here in Moss Point, Mississippi. I guess I'm in Moss Point, Mississippi, Escataba, Mississippi, at the Freedom Church. And I'm uh, going to share with you a little message from the Revelation. And, and it's a message about the rapture of the church and us being there celebrating with Jesus Christ. It's the fifth and sixth uh, chapter, pardon me, fourth and fifth chapters of Revelation. And I want to start out by reminding you of the first part of Revelation that is explained in verses 1, 2, and 3 of the first chapter. And, and it, it says this. I need to read it to you because it gives us understanding of what God wants to do and help us to understand what He is doing. Listen to this. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave to Jesus to show His servants things which must shortly take place. And He sent and signified it by His angel to His servant John. That's John the Beloved. Who bore witness to the Word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. And listen to this third verse. Blessed is he who reads those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Now, now he tells us, he explains to us in these first three verses how important it is for us to understand or seek to understand the Word of God, the revelation, because Jesus is coming soon. We don't have a lot of time left. And that's why I'm talking about the rapture. It takes place in the fourth chapter of Revelation. And I'm going to turn there now and read a little bit from that. And, and it, it, it's just exciting. It's a short chapter in the Bible. And it starts this way. This way, after these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on it. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their heads. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about those 24. I'm going to talk about the the fourth verse first here. The 24 were the 12 patriarchs in the Old Testament, and the other 12 were the apostles. And these were the leaders of the Old Testament church and the New Testament church, and they'd all been taken up and were sitting in the presence of God. They'd been raptured. And, and we were represented by them there in the church, and they received their crown. I thought, what an exciting thing that they're, they just got there, and they, re, they receive a crown, a crown of righteousness, because you got to get the crown of righteousness or you don't get to heaven. <laughs> and that comes when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and ask Him to come into your life and forgive your sin and save your soul. And He does, and He gives you a crown of righteousness. The Scripture says it this way, that He takes our sin, and He becomes that sin, and we take His righteousness, and we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 
Therefore, we get a crown, a crown of righteousness. I think it's such an exciting thing. Uh, some people try to make it difficult to understand these things that I'm talking about, but, but the simplicity of it is very plain when you start understanding the first three verses of the book. They help because they tell you about the past, they tell you about the present, and they tell you about the future. The past was the time of the Old Testament and the time of the uh, uh, New Testament, the time of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, and some of the Gospels and some of the epistles were in that part. And then the New Testament time was, uh, I, I mean, the present time, the seven churches of, of uh, that are the seven churches in the Revelation and, and just a time of uh, the church age when the church bloomed and the love of Jesus poured out of the hearts of we the Christians and other people got in that love and came to Jesus. You see, that's the way this works. The scripture says in John, it says, if you believe on Jesus Christ and trust in him as your Lord and Savior, that out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing to understand that if Christians are walking in Christ, that there's something coming out of them. It's the presence of God, and people can sense that. Sometimes they get angry, sometimes they get happy. It can't tell for sure what's going to happen, but something happens when you, when a Christian comes up to a person that's deep in sin and talks to that person, there's, there's a kind of an eruption that moment because that guy comes into the presence of Jesus and any sinner that comes into the presence of Jesus is touched by Jesus. That's why it's so important for we Christians to live like Christians, to walk to walk with God as Christ would have us to walk with God. It's just so important for us to put away all those things that are bad and we know are bad and start just doing those things which show that we love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. Well, well, back to the rapture. I want you to know that it could happen in the next 10 minutes. Everything has been satisfied in the scripture that point up to the rapture. It could take place any moment. Then after it will come the seven year tribulation period when Israel is going to be tested mightily. And, and it's a, a great time of trouble for Israel. And it's coming very soon. So I wanted to tell you there's a rapture coming and you can go in it if you'll receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Would you like to receive him today? He's eager for it. The scripture says that God is willing that none perish. And he said, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved but Jesus Christ. He said, come unto me and I will show you great and marvelous things that you know not. Hear me today, my friends. God is wonderful and he loves us. Sometimes we get pictures of people that say they're loving God and they're killing people and ripping and snorting and cavorting, doing all sorts of funny things. I don't think that's part of Christianity. I think that's something else. So be careful. <laughs> but I want you to know today is the day of salvation. If you want to get saved, just give your heart to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. Come into my heart. Forgive my sin and set me free. I want to be a child of God. I want to go up in the rapture. Thank you and God bless you. Glad I got to talk to you. I feel like it's such an honor to tell somebody about the Word of God, what I believe about it. Love you.